What do you guys want to do tonight? No, no. Same thing we always do. <laughs> Try to take over the world. Holiday Court is now back. Brought to you in front of a live studio audience by the wizards at Adipose Bakeries. When it's not eggs, it's Adipose. It's beginning to look a lot like mistrial. Everywhere you look, the judge looks cross and at a loss. Ready to throw the book. Order, order. I will have order. <sighs> Mr. Elaniel Gorps, please call your next witness. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. The, the defense calls the head of the elves' union, Bernard uh, Housedown. And call me Bernard. Bernard, uh, you were with the Christmas Corporation while under Krampus. Yes, uh, I have been with the company since its very beginnings, back before it became an actual holiday in the spirit of giving and whatnot. Yes, uh, those things were added later under Mr. Klaus. So, Bernard, things were not so jolly under Mr. Krampus, were they? Look, a job is a job. Back then, the Christmas Corporation was a coal mining operation, and we elves were hired due to our stature. You could fit more of us in the holes, and the toxic fumes float above our heads, so it was a good fit. Elves used to be taller, but hey, Darwin was right. Sounds like a dreadful experience. Yeah, maybe for a white-collar schmuck like yourselves, but we elves love to get our hands dirty. I assure you that, as a lawyer, there's nothing clean about these hands. Cute. I live for false equivalencies. I don't know what that means. But surely, your working conditions were less than satisfactory. Uh, Krampus had 17 safety violations filed against him in a single year. Listen, Krampus did what he could. Yes, we made less than minimum wage. Yes, we worked 18-hour days. But we had excellent medical and dental, along with a weekly coal allowance for heating our tiny company-provided living shacks. Krampus even gave us shares in the company. And the safety issues? Eh, That only started after times got hard and coal was less in demand. You're speaking of the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, that. Uh, people started to power things with, uh, you know, like, you know, gas and, 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 and you know, gasoline and, and uh, oil and stuff. Uh, not much call for coal after that. Uh, the mines went into disrepair as money got tight. You can't blame Krampus for failing profits. One could say it was due to poor management and an unwillingness to diversify. Listen, I'm just a worker. I, I don't know all your fancy terms and such. I just know that things were not looking good for the company. And that is approximately when my client, Mr. Klaus, came into the picture. Yeah, Klaus shows up peddling his candy company brand canes. Now, Krampus notoriously hates sweets, but that don't bother Klaus not. Uh, The guy could sell salt to a snail. Uh, He tells Krampus that his secret ingredient would up productivity of his elves significantly if it uh, fed it to us on an hourly basis. Secret ingredient? Yeah, but that was back before they discovered that cocaine was bad for you. We love those candy cocaines. Productivity went up and Krampus hired Klaus on to help with sales and marketing. Uh, Too bad the FDA made Klaus change the recipe after that whole thing that happened in the 50s. And then again in the 60s, uh, after the DEA got involved. And of course, there was that thing with the CIA in the 70s. But they, they had absolutely no proof tying us to the cartels. Almost took down a president, though. Come to think of it, we tangled with a lot of acronyms through the years. Wonder why that is. And uh, how would you describe the relationship between Mr. Klaus and Mr. Krampus? I, I, I don't catch your meaning. I mean, did they get along? Was there any infighting between them? Was uh, Mr. Klaus hostile? 
Ugh, the two of them did everything together and always put the company first. And Saturday brunches were especially nice. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Phil, you may cross-examine. Said the judge to Mr. Phil. Said the judge to Mr. Phil. You may cross-examine. You may cross-examine. Bernard, things seemed dandy under Krampus, did they not? It was a good job as any elf ever had. So what changed? It seems that Mr. Klaus caused a major disruption to my client's entire operation in a very short period of time. Uh, how's that? Well, you yourself said everyone was quite happy under Krampus. Seems something had changed. I already told you. People were not buying coal as much. Would it surprise you to learn that Mr. Klaus owned shares in an Alberta oil company when he began working for Krampus? That would, actually. Indeed. And would you also be surprised to learn that Mr. Klaus's candy cocaines are petroleum-based? Now that you mention it, that would explain the aftertaste. Objection! Relevance? Overruled. Get to the point, Mr. Phil. I put forward that Mr. Klaus infiltrated the Christmas Corporation to sabotage my client's operation from his own interests. Objection! Overruled! I further put forward that Mr. Klaus, owning shares of an oil company and working for Mr. Krampus, who ran a coal mining facility, was in direct conflict of interest. So I ask you now, Bernard, what changed after Mr. Klaus joined the company? Well, uh, within two years, we hit an all-time sales low, Mm -hmm. and we actually went a whole month without pay. Mm. Uh, We nearly had to close the mine. And what happened to those shares you all had in the company? Well, they all went straight down the toilet. Uh, They were practically worthless. And what happened at that point? Well, we had no money. We couldn't sell our shares. Half of us were hooked on candy canes. I myself was breaking into gingerbread houses to supply my habit. Uh, we were in a bad way. Then along comes Mr. Klaus with a solution. Yeah, he buys our shares. He buys your shares. How kind of Mr. Klaus. Yeah, but he buys them for more than triple their value. Hmm. He saved our lives. He, he, he put that money right back into the company. Walks right up to Krampus and puts a check in his hand. And what percentage of the company were all those shares worth? Including his own shares? Mm -hmm. I'd say about 52%. 52%! Suddenly, Mr. Klaus has a controlling share of the company by buying shares that have been greatly reduced in value due to his meddling. No further questions, Your Honor. (gasps) I, I, I never thought of it that way. Santa Claus... Say it ain't so. It wasn't like that, Bernard. I I have always put you else first. That'll be all, Mr. Bernard. You may step down. Will the defense please keep their client under control? Apologies, Your Honor. I've been standing this whole time. (laughs) It will not happen. All right. If there are no further witnesses, Mr. Phil, would your client like to speak on their own behalf? Yes, Your Honor. I call my client Krampus Demon to the stand. Krampus, you are the original owner and CEO of the Christmas Corporation. Yeah, that is I! Mm. And can you explain to me in detail the occurrences that led to the hostile takeover of Christmas by Mr. Klaus whilst in your employ? Well, I think I could do that best in song. (gasps) But just because I'm a child-abducting demon uh, means I don't have an appreciation for musical theatrics. If the court allows, I would like to submit into evidence a song from my client as his testimony. Well, the narrator has been trying to make this a musical all evening. Really, I thought I was subtle. La 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 la. Right? Why not? We already had a flashback. Why not a song? A little percussion, if you will. Remember, Klaus, I let you in, and I got on my knees and begged you save my business and not be a jerk? Well, you came right in, and then the days got worse and worse, and now you know I'm completely out of my butt. 
end. You took my Christmas away, ha ha. Uh-huh. You took my Christmas away, ho ho, hee hee, ho ho. To the North Pole, where things are freezing all the time. It's freezing, hooves don't work at 40 below. You took my Christmas away, ha ha. You thought my call was a joke, and so you laughed. You laughed when I had said that bankruptcy would make me flip. Right. You know you laughed, you heard you laughed, you laughed and laughed and laughed, and then you stole my day and left me utterly mad. And you took my Christmas away, ha ha, you took my Christmas away, ho ho, he he, ho ho, to the North Pole, with toys and candy and drifts of snow, and little elves who sit and smile, all my work you did defile, you took my Christmas away, ha ha. I gave you work, I bought your canes, and this is how you pay me back for all my kind and selfish loving deeds? What? Well, you just wait, I'll sue you yet, and when I do, they'll take your sleigh and put you out on your fat jolly butt. And you took my Christmas away, ha ha, you took my Christmas away, ho ho, hee hee, ho ho, to the North Pole, where things are freezing all the time, and freezing herbs don't work at 40 below. You took my Christmas away, ha ha. To the happy place. I'm sorry, Mr. Krampus, this is ridiculous. I'm going to ask the jury and the audience to ignore that that ever happened. Outrageous! I will not tolerate this blatant violation of my... Mr. Phil, control your client. I apologize, Krampus. I, for one, thought that song was quite lovely. I was enjoying that, and I'm sure the audience was as well. Objection, Your Honor. Honor. The song was horrendous. Agreed. All reference to said song will be stricken from the record. It's been stricken (laughs) from the record. And if the narrator sings anything to deck the halls once more, I will have you removed from this hall. Do you comprehend? (laughs) Yes, Your Honor. Good. Isn't this exciting, folks? Well, very well. There will be no further mention of that well-crafted song very well during Good Krampus. <laughs> Krampus, let's start at the beginning. You were the owner and CEO of Christmas Corporation. Yeah, I had been running a thriving coal mining empire for about 184 years. We had the best coal, the cleanest coal. My company single-handedly made coal great again. I I don't think that's a thing. Trust me, I know coal. I had all the best coal. And I'd like to point out that before Crooked Klaus joined my team, we had the best profits ever. I was probably the best CEO the company had ever seen. I did the best job. I would give myself an A+. Well, that's all well and good, but let's focus on Mr. Klaus. Why did you hire him? You're running a thriving business. Your employees are happy. Why bring in this unknown? Well, I was tricked, obviously. Obviously. He, he showed up selling his sugary confections. Little did I know that his candy cocaines had actual cocaine in them. He gives the, me a free sample and got me all hepped on uh, some very bad stuff. Very bad. Uh, the worst. I'm a family man. I would never lower myself to ingesting common street drugs. Of course not, of course not. So, what happened then? Well, I'm hooked. I'm flying high and he's talking me into diversifying my portfolio. Adding the canes of the sales of candy to my business plan. It was his idea to get the workers hooked on candy to make them work faster. Well... So far, it sounds like he's only improving things. Ah! It would have had he not decided to start giving away candy, and the next thing I know, we're making toys and giving those away too. He was bleeding me dry. Then he tells me we should move Christmas to the North Pole. And did you agree to this? Of course not. Mm. But then he buys out a 52% controlling share as a company, and the next thing I know, I'm living at the North Pole. My arthritic hooves could, just couldn't take it. But you stayed on and helped run things, correct? I tried. I really did. But I'm a demon, you'll see. The extreme cold is literally killing me, so I had to move back to Germany. And when you arrived at your ancestral home? Klaus had sold it, all of it. I was homeless, 
and with no direction left in life. So I took to stealing children and selling them on the black market. But only the naughty ones. A once thriving businessman left homeless and turned to crime to make ends meet. A tragedy. We seem to have a pattern. <gasps> no further questions. God rest ye prosecution in everything dismay. Remember that the defense still has yet to say that Krampus is a lunatic and soon will go away. Oh, tidings of candy canes and coal, candy canes and coal. Oh, tidings of candy canes and coal. Mr. Gorps, you may cross-examine. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Krampus Demon, you say that you are homeless and have resorted to criminal activities to support yourself. That is correct. But do you not still have a 48% ownership of the Christmas Corporation? Well, yes, but... Which I... gives you an average profit of $847 billion, with a B, dollars per annum. Yes, but those are not liquid assets. Boo! 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 No further questions, Your Honor. Oh. Order! Oh. Order! <laughs> Mr. Gorps, will your client be testifying on his own behalf? He will, Your Honor. Call your witness. The defense calls Nicholas Klaus to the stand. Silver bells. Silver bells, silver, silver bells, silver bells. It's Santa's time to bear witness. Ring a ling, ring a ling. He will sing, he will sing. Soon it will be verdict time. Mr. Gorps, is your client really planning on singing? It's not what we had planned, Your Honor, but we could certainly comply if the court wishes. I'm sure that we could do without. Mr. Gorbs, please continue. Nicholas Klaus, would you call yourself a smart businessman? Well, I'd say that my hundreds of years of being profitable was still giving away billions of dollars worth of toys and treats speaks for itself. So it's fair to say that you have been a big asset to Christmas over the centuries. As the proofs in the Christmas pudding. <laughs> Objection! There is no pudding present at this. It's sustained. Mr. Klaus, if you could please refrain from Christmas puns, I think that everyone would find you more tolerable. Continue, Mr. Gorps. And how was the state of the Christmas Corporation when you arrived? A crumbling pile of coal it was. Sales were in a steep decline. Krampus hired me on to help with sales and marketing, as that has always been my expertise, I think you might say. Well, that and acquiring concubines for my chieftain. As things got worse, I tried to convince him to diversify his portfolio. Such as? Well, sweets at first, but then there was a huge boom in the toy market that I thought we could take advantage of. And what was Krampus's response? Oh, kicking and screaming, mostly screaming. His family had been in coal for generations, and he was stuck in his ways. And you left it at that? At first... But then there was one month where things got so bad that the elves could not be paid. Our shares in the company were utterly worthless. Krampus locked himself in his office and didn't come out for days at a time. When he did, he'd yell at the employees and spout crazy conspiracies about bacon and snow persons and collusion and communists. I stand by those theories. Be that as it may... Something had to be done. So I took my savings from my time as a candy vendor and offered to buy out the elves' shares in the company at triple their value. So you now had a controlling share in Christmas. How did Krampus take that? He went on a three-week bender. He stopped production, he locked the employees out of the mines, and then he started adopting bad children. 
So, what did you do then? It seemed like it was all over at that point. Bernard came to me saying that the elves had formed a union and demanded that I, as the controlling member of Christmas, secure their jobs and get things running again. So, I took what little money was left and I repurposed some equipment to start producing toys instead of revining coal. The elves were back to work and we had a marketable product that people loved. And things got better. That year, we turned the first profit that the company had seen in many years. But I knew that we could do better. Oh, please, elaborate. (laughs) Objection, Your Honor. On what grounds, Mr. Phil? This testimony is clearly upsetting my client. He's foaming at the mouth. Overruled, and please get your client a towel or a bucket or something. Continue, Mr. Klaus. (sighs) The coal mine was costing us an arm and a leg, mostly legs. I called a meeting with the union reps and asked if they would take issue with relocating the company to a cheaper location. I put forth several areas that had better land fees and excellent tax breaks for companies willing to relocate. In the end, the elves agreed and settled on the North Pole. So the North Pole was not your decision? Hell no! It was a majority vote. I personally was pulling for the Dominican. But the North Pole had the best tax incentives. Well, it sounds to me that you took everyone's best interests to heart here. You even let the elves, despite no longer owning shares in the company, vote on major company decisions. Happy employees are the ones who stand by you. Plus, we couldn't afford a strike. Well, that just seems like a win for everyone. Your Honor, no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Gorps. Mr. Phil, your witness. Mr. Klaus, St. Nick, Pearl Noel. These are all you? Of course. The children all over the world have many names for me. Are these names they gave you or simply the names you provided? I don't catch your meaning, sir. Are these names you provide whilst conducting your illegal activities? I beg your pardon. Objection, badgering the witness. Sustained, Mr. Phil, is there a point? I'm simply pointing out that how can we trust a man with multiple identities, who has already been accused of identity theft, who is known to enter people's homes uninvited? Your Honor, if my client is uninvited, then why do children leave out milk and cookies as thanks for his kindness. Mr. Phil, please stick to the subject at hand. I will not allow for these theatrics. Please get back on topic so we can get through this. Very well. I guess we only enforce certain laws in this court. Mr. Phil, your tone is going to cause your client to be without counsel if it continues. Apologies, Your Honor. Don't let it happen again. You may continue. Mr. Klaus, Let us get back to the fact that you owned shares in an Alberta oil company at the time that you were hired by my client. Did you not see this as a conflict of interest? Well, I... Would it not benefit you to drive down the profits of a competing company? Well, that was not my intent. And then to turn around and buy up the shares of that competing company would seem to scream of insider trading. Objection! Thus making your hostile takeover of Christmas complete illegal. Objection! Immoral and very intentional, despite your pretense and good deeds! Objection! Leading the witness! You are a criminal! You should be treated as such! Also, your likeness being represented as toys, merchandise, statues, and pictures makes Christmas about you! Your narcissism has, has no bounds, sir. Objectification, your honor! Don't you mean objection? I know what I said! Watch your tone! Sustained. No further questions. Oh, no, I don't understand. Oh, no, 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 no. What the shit? That, that was necessary to first as a brand. <laughs> we wish you a merry trial. Everybody's in denial. It's become a steaming pile and very unclear. I think we can safely move into the closing arguments. Does either the defense or the plaintiff have any other witnesses they'd like to call? No, No, Your Your Honor. Honor. I was hoping you'd say that. Mr. Phil, you first. From time immemorial, the Mon family has been running Christmas with much success. The best success. Although it is true that in the past century, 
The demand for coal has diminished. Who doesn't like getting a lovely, dirty lump of coal in their stocking at this special time of year? Any, anyone? Well, I know I do. <laughs> this wouldn't have been possible without the hard work and dedication of this demon, Mr. Krampus. Sure, the spirit has changed. Yes, it is not the same as it was before. Not everyone is down with heating their homes with something that gives you black lung. That's a stigma. We have to move away from prejudice. You have to remember that if it wasn't for the original meaning of Christmas, brought to you by Mr. Krampus and his hard-working family, all your ancestors would be dead. Thank you. That was grim. Thank you, Your Honor. Things change. Uh, even though the Mon family may have been the originators of Christmas, everything evolves. Whereas before it was about coal and heating your home, Christmas is now about sharing, giving, helping others, love. All the great things we need to have when it's minus 30 below and there's still three months until the thaw. You're welcome. This is what Mr. Klaus has brought to the holiday. Yes, warming your home is important, but so is warming our hearts. Aww. Oh, you suck up. That's why I want you to think of Santa Claus as the true owner of Christmas. He's brought so much to it, it would be a shame to revert to what it was before, don't you think? No. Dear audience, I guess now is as good a time as any to tell you that you are also the jury. Surprise! You can thank me later. Needless to say, we need you to make a decision one way or the other in this case. One, if I might add, of the most important cases brought before this court in the last several centuries. No pressure, by the way. Just take a deep breath and imagine you are deciding the fate of the world, which you are. Everything will be fine. So for this part, I'm going to need you to clap. Can you do that? By applause. Do you, the audience and jury of this trial, consider Krampus D. Mon the owner and proprietor of Christmas. Clap now or forever hold your peace. Yes, give it up for Crampy. Okay. <laughs> By applause, do you, the audience and jury of this trial, consider Santa Claus the owner and proprietor of Christmas. Clap now or forever regret your neglect of duty. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> By the power of all your in children. <laughs> By the powers vested in me, and majority applause, I'd like to declare the winner of this trial... We wish to interject, ma'am. We wish to interject, ma'am. We wish to interject, ma'am. Introduce evidence. Not you again. Yes, but it's not what you think. I have evidence that is crucial to this trial. But why now? For dramatic effect. A plot twist. And if I'd come out right at the beginning of the show, there wouldn't have been one. First of all, I am not a simple narrator. My name is Bob. Bob the Baker. And I am the original owner of Christmas. <gasps> <gasps> Excuse me? You're the what? Preposterous! Uh-oh. I was part of the original tribe that began Christmas eons ago. What proof do you have of this? Fruitcake! What did you call me? No, no, no. It's what we made and still do, in fact. Fruitcake. We never abandoned Christmas. We were just so busy making fruitcake that we had no time to attend to it. Do you have any idea the time it takes to make a good fruitcake? I can't say I honestly ever cared or knew that there was such a thing as good fruitcake. <laughs> have you tried soaking it in rum? Mmm, sounds like a Perfectly good waste of rum. But I may as well indulge your question. How much time does it take to make a good fruitcake? Years, Your Honor. It takes years. In any event, my tribe doesn't want to have the entire holiday returned to us. Too labor-intensive. We're still making fruitcake. We would, however, like to be recognized and have a share in the enterprise. We think that would be fair. Why don't I let the fine folks of Adipose Bakeries tell you about it in this informative video? 
Here at Outpost Bakeries R&D Facilities, we pride ourselves on our dedication to food innovation. We take everyday foods such as hot dogs, donuts, and fruitcake. Then we ask, can we do it better? The answer more often than not is, yes we can. So join me now as we at Adipost Bakeries reinvent everyone's favorite holiday treat, the fruitcake. Let me introduce you to Gary. Hi there. Gary is head of our advanced genetics lab here in, the, here in charge of growing the cakes. <laughs> when you say it like that, it, it, it sounds a little creepy. <laughs> Maybe I'll let you explain the process to these fine folks. I'd be happy to. Here at the Adipose Bakery's R&D facilities, we use only the best genetically enhanced DNA to gestate our cakes. Each cake is grown from a single almost bird egg and fertilized by organic flour and sugar. The fertilized eggs are placed in our patented gestation tanks, where they mature for four years. <laughs> you, you make it sound like these cakes are alive. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Wait, what? Are you serious? Well, not alive like you or I. These are merely brainless clones created from genetic materials collected from fossil records of the first fruit cakes. This one seems to be trying to attack me through the gestation chamber glass. <laughs> yes, as you know, prehistoric fruit cakes were very aggressive. But we will take care of that in step two of the process. You mean there's more? Of course. What would fruitcake be without maraschino cherries? <laughs> You're making my mouth water, Gary. That's just a decontamination mist. <laughs> Follow me. This is where the maraschino cherry magic firing range happens. Firing range? How else are you going to put them slithering, sugary confections down? <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, you gave me quite the scare, sir. This is Francis. He's in charge of neutralizing the cakes. I'll leave you in his capable hands. Tell me, Mr. Prim and Proper, have you ever seen what a maraschino cherry traveling at 70 kilometers an hour can do to a cake? <laughs> no, actually, I think... The, the answer is not a hell of a lot. Penetrating that tough fruitcake exterior membrane requires semi-automatic rounds fired at high velocities with armor-piercing cherries. That's where Greta comes in. Oh, uh, Greta? Is she an engineer or, or somebody else that I could talk to? <laughs> I like you, Mr. Prim. Greta's my gun! An Adipose Bakery's limited edition fully automatic FC-13 calibrated to fire 30 maraschino cherries per second. Why the heavy artillery? Sending in specimen 2763. <laughs> you, you can't get too close to them cakes. Uh, they may not have a brain, but that just makes them all the more wild. They, the only one instinct to rip that dopey smile off your face. So... Confirmation on neutralization of 2763. Confirmed! Oh my, I, I think it's still moving. Oh, that's just the nervous system. Uh, but just to be sure, that's where step three comes in, the walnuts. This is where you'll get an up-close and personal visit with our little fruitcake friend. But first, you gotta put on one of them fancy hazmat suits and meet Tim in the walnut insertion bay. Well, hello. You must be Tim. Yes, uh, I'm just one of the Fruitcake Wrangler and Walnut Insertion Team. Fascinating. And why are we wearing these hazmat suits? Well, until these nuts are inserted into the cake, the fruitcakes can be rather volatile. Mm. You see, these are special walnuts that have been genetically altered to neutralize the nervous system of the fruitcake, leaving them inert and ready for consumption. Well, color me excited. Let's go. Let's get to it. 
I'm told you have very special tools used for the process. Well, yes, we, we do have those, uh, but I've been doing this for years, and I, I like to use a more hands-on approach. Okay, Control, I'm inserting the first walnut now. Roger that. Proceed with caution. None needed. <laughs> are, are you sure about this? This looks very dangerous. First nut insertion complete. Uh, hold on. Having a, a little resistance. Is it supposed to be doing that? Report. It's, it's sticking to my glove. Your glove? Why the hell are you touching it? Oh, God, it's crawling up my hand, and it's eating through the glove. Initiating lockdown and incineration protocol. You better get out of here. What, what's going on? Oh, Jesus. Incineration in five. Four, Tell my wife three, her alimony payments two, just stopped. One. Enjoy my house, you. Well, um, I think that was the wrong tape. I'm pretty sure that was for the insurance company. I, I can get the real tape if you like. No, no, thank you. I, I, I think we got the picture, but honestly. Mr. Bob. Baker. Baker Bob, you could have led with that at the beginning of the trial. This has been two hours of my existence. I'm never getting back. I could have been working on my whole global warming scheme. I'll, I'll allow the evidence. Do the plaintiff or the defense have any obje objection to this arrangement? Uh, none, none, Your Honor. Honor. Then I will award Baker Bob a 4% stake in the company, which leaves 48 to Santa and 48 to Mr. Krampus. Mr. Baker Bob will therefore be the swing vote on any board meetings. This trial is adjourned. Merry Christmas. Yay! Wait, does this mean that Santa and I are equal partners? I believe that's what she's saying, Crampy. That's, uh, that's all I ever wanted, to be your equal. That and abduct and punish naughty children. Ha! Oh, Crampy, you've always been my equal. I've only ever wanted what is best for you and the elves. Can't say I approve of all the kidnappings, but let's let bygones be bygones. Did someone say kidnappings? Oh, Loki! <laughs> <laughs> Santa, I have one more thing to say. Hmm? Should old acquaintance be forgot and ever brought to mind? For old lang sign, my dear, for old lang sign, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for old lang sign. And surely you'll buy your pine cup, and surely I'll buy mine. And we'll take a cup of kindness yet for all my time. Thank you, everybody. Yay. What? <laughs> <laughs>